name is Terence Metz. I'm the lead curriculum developer for MG Rush. We focus on structure facilitation with a strong emphasis on decision making, prioritization, and decision quality. This tool called the Decision Matrix is but one of hundreds of tools and tips that you could obtain from our fast professional facilitation class. A decision matrix. If you went to any boss, steering team, decision review board or committee and said we've made the following decision or recommendation, first question they would ask and actually most of the time is why. We're about to show you how to facilitate an understanding of that why and how you can array your options against your criteria on a single sheet of paper called a decision matrix. We trust at this point in time that you're capable of facilitating lists and galvanizing understanding and definitions about things on those lists. There are really three things that one needs to prioritize effectively. First, you should have the purpose of the object. We are going to uh, demonstrate using sports as an example today. So we would want to understand what is the purpose of sports. You know, is it recreational, is it professional, but relative to the group at hand, what is the purpose? Setting that aside, everything else appeals back to that purpose, including the options and criteria. So we trust you could certainly build a list of sports options. People might suggest things like basketball, soccer, curling, chess, mountain climbing, etc. And then we would identify, well, what are the criteria that cause you to think that something is a sport or not? such as the amount of sweat, perhaps competition, field of play, rules and things of that nature. So given your options and your criteria, you're now ready to enter the world of a decision matrix. Dr. Tufte, in fact, encourages this light background of grid lines, suggesting this is not primary information. It should recede in the background so that, in fact, your primary information can pop out at you. We would normally take whatever we have the fewest of and array across our x-axis. What we have the most of, we would array along the y-axis. So here, let's suggest we have criteria. And some of the criteria as to what we deem to be important to a sport might be sweat, the amount of sweat, rules, competition, etc. Here we need to take our options. Options in this case would be examples of sports and some examples might be football, curling, and chess, etc. The close-ended question will fail miserably here if you were to ask, does football involve sweat? The answer is clearly yes. And one could even argue up to the point that chess involves sweat. If you've seen any grandmasters playing, you've seen some sweat dropping. So we're going to use the uh, open-ended question. And to do that, we're going to rely on a tool called Powerballs. You've seen this in prior lessons. But to remind you, the tool is simply a symbol. Symbol suggesting a lot, a little, or somewhere in between. Whether the terms in black change or not, we don't really care. This could be full, empty, half full type of thing. We always rely on the economic definitions. These definitions resonate well with most any audience. High being mandatory, have to have it at any price. Low meaning I'd like to have it, but I'm not willing to pay any extra for it. And moderate being I'm willing to pay a reasonable amount. Interestingly enough, many people argue about what's reasonable when in fact for decision quality, these are the two buckets that are key. Using those symbols, we can now ask the open-ended question. Assuming there's a relationship of everything, Einstein kind of proved that, we can now suggest that perhaps sweat rules and competition are involved for all these things, but to what extent might football involve sweat? And somebody may answer, well, football involves a lot of sweat. So we would see a large power ball here. To what extent does football rely on rules? And while I don't know the proper answer, maybe somebody says a fair amount, but there are other sports perhaps that involve more rules. 
And to what extent does football involve competition? And somebody may say that, particularly if it's uh, world football, known as soccer here in the States, or even domestic football, a lot of competition, etc. To what extent does curling involve sweat? And interestingly enough, somebody might say it does involve sweat, but typically, guess what, not particularly a lot. To what extent does curling involve rules? And perhaps the answer is there's not a whole lot of rules there. But somebody argues that the competition is international and very severe due to certain factors, and we'll allow that to be moderate. To what extent might chess involve sweat? And again, we find out that chess does not necessarily involve a lot of sweat, but perhaps chess has some very strenuous rules and pos and things of that nature. And to what extent does chess have competition? And we discover there are millions of people in chess clubs around the world, perhaps it involves quite a bit of competition. Well, as you can begin to see where we complete this, we would have a strong visual reflection of all of our options arrayed against our criteria to know from a prioritization standpoint to what extent are these things sports or not. If we were a sports drink manufacturer, for example, <clears throat> we might actually numerically sum these up. If you allow this to be five, this to be three, and this to be one, symbols respectively, we discover that football comes in at a 13, correct? Here we have one, two, five, and here we have one, the three gives you a four, and a five is a nine. So based on this, perhaps if we were a sports drink company wanting to target a particular audience, suggestion might be we might want to target on football first, and perhaps just because of the amount of participants over the sport of curling. That's a decision make matrix providing visual feedback on why you made the particular recommendation or decision that you did. Again, one of hundreds of tools and tips available through the FAST, fast Professional Facilitation class. Please join us, and don't forget, knowledge speaks. Well.